We're at Fiber Space in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. This store has a cute little park out front, an amazing space upstairs to hang out, tons of beautiful murals on the side of the building, and lots of amazing yarn. Let's head in and check it out. Hi, my name's Danielle and I'm the owner of Fiberspace. And we're gonna take a tour. Let's start up here at the front. Okay. So we start in the store with our lace section. Uh, we are kind of known for knitting for olive at this point. So that's the biggest part of this wall. Uh, we import this. It's a wonderful yarn brand that's really designed to make your own yarn. So you can combine mohair, merino, their silk, their cashmere, and sort of blend it all together into the gauge and the feel that you want. So this has been a big, um, Big fan of our customers. This for sure. is wild because on the way here this morning, I'm planning my next sweater and it uses the, knit the knitting for olives. Yeah. So great. I'll be shopping later. Yeah. And mohair <laughs> is a big thing. So we've got some mo other mohairs in this area as well. Um, the Berenice from Dare Rim Natura is really beautiful. Um, so that's another option. Dare Rim Natura is one of the brands that's unique to us. There's only a few shops in the US carrying it. Um, oh. It is a sustainable brand from France. They're using French uh, merino that's black and white French merino. So you get this heathered uh, appearance in most of their yarns. And there's a lot of gauges of their yarn in the store I can show you, but that's a that's another brand that um, we get a lot of folks coming in just to find. And it is one of the few brands that we do sell online as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I have not seen that before. So I'll yeah, look at that as that's, well. I'll show you the other the other versions of that yarn in the shop. So great. Um, and then our fingering section is one of our largest sections. We do a lot of hand dyes here. So there's a lot of hand dye fingering weight. Nice. Um, I do have Miss Babs, um, which is unique to us as well. There aren't a lot of stores that have her yarn. Um, she comes out here once a year for a huge pop up. Uh, this is a you know great example of her yarn. Um, her new neon tweeds. It's so much fun. Yeah, I haven't seen it glows this in the dark. The little. Yeah, the little specks go in the dark. That is way yeah. too fun. So having uh, Miss Babs is another thing that's pretty unique to us. Um, we also do a lot of breed specific. So Sea Change Fibers, for example, they are doing breed specific yarns. And so we are really excited to carry them. So this is all Corydale. Nice. Um, so we are trying to focus on sheep breeds here. Mm -hmm. And we do label the yarns. Um, with the sheep breeds, if possible, and like a little profile of the sheep. Cool. So this is the most popular of the Dayroom Natura yarns, I would say. Okay. This is their sport wheat. So it's a it's a woolen spun yarn, very mm -hmm. similar to um, maybe the Brooklyn Tweed brand that does the woolen spun and a lot of the stuff you see coming out of Harrisville. Um, but really beautiful, natural heathered colors. Very lofty. Very lofty. Yeah. yeah. So you're getting a lot of yardage for the weight. It makes very lightweight garments. Oh gosh. <laughs> the reason I think our customers love it so much is it pairs really nicely with Spin Cycle. Oh. Uh, dyed in the wool. So they are good friends. Um, so these two are the, the two that we probably um, sell the most together. Nice. Um, this is our magical spin cycle dyed in the wool wall. We carry every color of spin cycle dyed in the wool. We every color? every color, and we have it all on our web store. And we are also happy to text photos of what we've got because we understand people are very particular about what version. Um, <laughs> yeah, because, for example, so these are the same color. Right. <laughs> so we do a lot of uh, texting photos to people who placed web orders. Um, to ask them which ones they want because that is very it does handy. make a difference yeah um biggest section in the store is our worsted section it starts here and it extends through the next two aisles Lovely. um so more spin cycle of course we are a huge um monostyl uruguay um store so there's monos in a lot of the areas of the shop uh women-owned cooperatives so we love to support them um, and then, yeah, one of our worsted sections, I do have an amazing um, local hand dyer out of Richmond. This is Little Fox. We have uh, several gauges of her yarn. Oh. So, yeah, she's doing really oh, solid, so soft. so soft, solid, consistent colors. Um, this one is her untreated 100% merino. So the other reason we really like her hand dye is it's all natural and she's not treating the wool. So it's not going to grow as much mm -hmm. as a machine washable would. She's got some really beautiful bases. 
So we are celebrating our 15th birthday this year. Ah, so one oh, of the congrats. things, thank you. One of the things we're doing the whole year long is a lot of customs. Um, so special edition stuff. So we, things like this, we have this little sock mini set from Spun Right Round, which is one of the hand dyers we work with. Cute. Um, Shelly Can, Shelly Martinez, of course, designed our 15 year anniversary shirt and some uh, special enamel pins for us. So Throughout the year, we're going to keep rolling out special customs to celebrate our birthday. I really like so. those. They're such fun colors. Yeah. So this is our machine washable um, worsted section, cotton blends, um, workhorse wools. Perfect. Um, and then we get into our chunky section. Of course, there's more spin cycle here. Um, we do carry wool folk as well. Uh, so just to point that out, this is Luft. This is their kind of bulky weight. Uh, really beautiful brand they also are sourcing from a specific breed of sheep which makes us really happy so this is the ovis 21 flock of merino out of patagonia it's very specific very cool and then this is just an example of um our sort of our focus on sheep breeds okay um, yeah. so yeah so we've got little signs that explain the sheep breed and the properties of them because cardo is all corydale so oh, we do like educational to just, yeah we want to educate the customer on like what the breed is that they're getting um and then this is another example. So we we work with Jill Draper because she is sourcing local to her in upstate New York from local farms, dyeing it in the wool and then spinning it into this really beautiful heathered yarn. So we love working with brands like that that are doing local to them um, sustainable sourcing of wool. Amazing. So, and then we are focused on independently published books as much as possible. So while we, of course, are carrying things that um, are more mass produced, but very necessary, like the loopy mango knitting <laughs> intro book mm -hmm. or the Vogue knitting um, ultimate quick reference, which yeah. everybody owns. Uh, we also are doing a lot of independently published stuff like publications from Amoriso, um, et cetera. So it's kind of our focus is to try to bring things that you might not find everywhere. Awesome. Um, and then my DK section is huge this season um, with some unique things that we are excited to have in, um, like Croft um, from West Yorkshire Spinners. And this is a Shetland wool, but it's washable. So we're trying to bring in some things people may not have seen before. Mm -hmm. De Gilpin, this is baby um, lamb's wool out of Scotland. Um, so that's another one that's like rather unique. Um, and also on our web shop, because it's a little harder to find in the US. Um, and then we love Mrs. Moon. This is our alpaca brand. Um, they're out of England, just these fun pops of color. This is another one we do actually sell online because it's harder to find. And um, we just think her patterns which are all free with the purchase of yarn and her color palette's like really fun so yeah this is great yarn yeah and it yeah. comes in a bulky weight that's upstairs too nice. um so one of the things we're committed to is creating community space so we have uh, a kids play area where you can kind of deposit your children while you're <laughs> roaming around we find a lot of um partners or spouses or grandparents will hang out here too with the children while somebody is wandering about the store because we get a lot of visitors and tourists at the shop so we wanted to create a space where the kids felt comfortable and had something to do we have some people in the neighborhood that just bring their kids in to play Aww. so that's really too. cute yeah we had a local artist paint it for us so oh, cool and then we have a second floor um our building was built in the late 1800s uh so we are a little stuck with our historic property and what we can change about it but it has created kind of a unique space where you can go exploring so the second floor space is a few things for us. It's our super bulky section um, for nice. most of the time. Sometimes we switch lace to up here, but it's our biggest gauges of yarn. We've also got some fun, like more crafting home goods style stuff. Um, we carry some macrame cords. We've got this really great um, twill tape and kits that go with those. Um, Interesting. Are and you then crocheting with it? Crocheting. You can oh. also do, some of these are knitted. Um, some of the designs are knitted or this is actually woven, but without a loom. Um, so this has been a fun company just for knitters that want to kind of, knitters or crocheters that want to do something quick and more crafty home goods mm -hmm. than heirloom garments. So um, we also love the toft kits. So we've been doing a lot of toft kits um, and it we just keep getting new ones in when they come out with new ones. So um, these have been really fun. A lot of folks have learned how to crochet with them, which has been great. Oh, nice. um, and then this space is really 
available for bigger events. So when we have designers come in, um, like we have Alex Berg coming, um, we have Betts White coming to do some holiday crafting workshops. So we're able to convert this whole space and we can fit up to 24 people at tables in here. So it's got awesome. a lot of flexibility for us up here. And this is also where you have like your weekly, mm -hmm. you call it stitch and space. Stitch is it because you're up here? Um, or just like was, a play on the name? Like it I was a play it was, on the name, yeah. It was always called stitch and space even when we were only one floor. So yeah. I thought it was funny when somebody was like, oh, it's gonna, it's upstairs. I'm like, oh, no way. I wonder if there's like this like space connection. Yeah, there's so many that. meanings. <laughs> It's always been the stitches space, but yeah, people gather in, well, really they fill the lounge and the tables on Thursday nights. So it's a big, it's a big gathering, a big group. And it's nice because if they have questions, they can come down and ask them. But for our community, it's a mix of newer stitchers and seasoned stitchers. And the newer ones, I think, feel more part of the community. They can get quick help from the person sitting next to them. So Definitely. it's helped, um, it's helped really make our newer folks feel comfortable in an environment that can sometimes be intimidating to somebody that's newer. So it's been good. So tell me about the history of the store. When did you open and is this your original location or have you been other places? Yeah, we've been in two previous other, two previous oh, wow. locations. Yeah, we opened in 2009 uh, in a smaller space on a side street off of the main drag in Old Town uh, and outgrew it in two years, expanded to the second floor of the building. We converted um, an apartment into office space for classes and storage because we really needed it. And then four years in, we moved to the main street, King Street, to a space that was double the size. And I was there for four years and the opportunity to purchase this building came up and I couldn't resist. So we, then we moved into this space. So we will be here forever because I own the building. So we yes. cannot move. <laughs> Was the space like this when you came in or did you have oh to renovate gosh. it? It was so ugly. Um, um, what was it before? Do you know? Yeah. So this was owned um, by the same guy. He was a developer. He actually built the townhouses behind us that are newer and the office building across the street that's newer. And he had leased it to um, a framer, Timmy, who did framing work for the Smithsonian and other really big famous people. So nobody was ever coming into the building because he had artwork that you really couldn't be around. It was sure. very important. So... The space was here, but no one was coming in and out. And it was just sort of bizarrely hidden for being at the intersection of three decently mm -hmm. traveled roads in Alexandria. It was painted battleship gray. The windows were all rotting. The front door was disgusting. The ceilings were drop ceilings. So we did an absolute ton of work from repointing all the brick outside and repainting the whole building to putting in fresh walls and ceiling and lighting. And um, the flooring was all new replace the, the stair rails. Yeah, a lot of work, many months of work. Wow. Yeah. It's a lovely space. I mean, Thanks. you've done such a Thanks. good job with it. And it's cool, like even your outdoor space, having that little, what, what do you call it? That's our there? park. Yeah, our your front park. park space. We got lucky this, I own some of the property out front and then the city owns the area around it. And I went to the city and said, can we just take this over and make this better? Mm -hmm. um, they were like, sure. So I signed a contract with them where we adopted that park space um, and then a fellow retailer, her husband is a nationally and internationally known landscape architect. So she offered her husband's services to sort of design that space out front affordably. Um, and he's the one that found the sheep that are out there that we're kind of known for and our huge Adirondack rocking chairs that are out front. So a lot of that atmosphere was donated to us by a retailer's husband who was really, really generous and kind in coming out and designing that space so that we could have an outdoor extended community space, which was, of course, very helpful during COVID. <laughs> because oh, absolutely. We had, we had a gathering place that was safe. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's really cool. And just like just even coming down the street, just like seeing the store and seeing your uh, yeah. fiber space, it was just really yeah. cool. 
very full. It's the brightest, most obnoxious building in the city. You cannot miss it. <laughs> Do people know of it, even if they're oh, not yeah. knitters and crocheters? Yeah, even my partner, he'll say like, oh yeah, my you know my girlfriend owns um, Fiberspace, the yarn store, and they'll go, that's the bright blue building with the sheep out front. <laughs> like, everybody knows this building. So I yeah. That. So what kinds of community do you have throughout the week? We heard a little bit about your stitch in space, mm -hmm. but what else do you have going on? Yeah, we offer regular classes up here in our second floor space. So the business, when I started it, um, prior to opening was the brick and mortar store. Uh, I was just teaching classes and I was using oh. borrowed spaces like coffee shops and bakeries around the area. So our class schedule and class program was a huge part of the business plan. And um, continuing to educate our customers and, and bring in new customers was a huge, important component. So having this much space carved out for classes was important. And that's every night we have, you know, customers coming in to learn or to just advance their skills in knit and crochet. So that's a, a huge part of what we do here in the space. Um, and then we do movie nights and yarn tastings and fun, free things that you can just gather and meet other stitchers and connect with people that you might not otherwise overlap with which is important in this DC area to have those um, to have those community spaces where you can relax and meet people and um, and have a place to be and chill. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so tell me more about starting out with the classes. Yeah. You were teaching and then... I was just teaching. Yeah, I was driving around with yarn and needles in my car. I had an account with a needle supplier um, who I still use. It's the, my East Coast um needle and notion supplier but they gave me an account in 2006 long before I opened the store and I had a little bit of yarn and I borrowed coffee shops and bakery spaces so we'd meet at seven o'clock in a coffee shop that would normally not have a whole lot of customers at seven o'clock at night and I would bring a group of stitchers in there they would have registered online and then came to the class and I would teach them knitting in a coffee shop so I yeah it was a little crazy it was fun though it was great to have that atmosphere and the coffee shops loved it. Um, but there were too many people I had taught how to knit who didn't have a yarn store to go get supplies. And there was a point where the classes that I was teaching, I couldn't have as mm -hmm. enough supplies to sustain it um, and really needed to open a store. So my customers, my students pushed me to open a shop. So that's wow. kind of how it came to be. That is yeah. really cool. Yeah. Are you still teaching classes now or do you have other people come in? I personally don't teach any classes anymore. <laughs> I cut back when I had my daughter, which she's now 11, which doesn't seem possible. But um, yeah, I don't, I personally don't teach any classes anymore just because of with, you know, my, my daughter, it's, it's hard to be here at night, but mm -hmm. um we have a lot, we have six or seven other teachers that come in and teach. A lot of them are former staff or current staff. So they're really tapped into our inventory and what's going on in the shop. So we have, we have a really great group of teachers. Amazing. Yeah. So for people who maybe don't live in the area, yeah. what is a good way for them to just keep up with what you're doing? Or maybe is some of your yarn available mm -hmm. online? So definitely Instagram um, and Facebook. So our social media um, places are the best place to see what's new and what's happening. Our newsletter, we send out at least one email a week that kind of summarizes what's come into the shop and what's new. We have a small curated web store. Um, I'm pretty careful about what we put on the web store. We're here doing you know, reaching the local community, providing so much extra service other than selling. So it's very hard to do that online. Mm -hmm. So I have reluctantly put online um, a handful of brands that are pretty difficult to find in the U.S. where we feel it's important that people can get them here without ordering from Europe or um, or struggling to find, you know, the color that they're looking for from a company like Spin Cycle. So because we stock every color of Spin Cycle and we stock um, nearly the entire Day Room Natura line, those are things we've put on our web store. But the vast majority of the inventory in the shop, like nearly 80% of it, is not on our web shop. So a lot of folks, if they see something unique um, on our Instagram, they'll just message us or text us and we can get it in the mail to them. But the web store is there for the the people that are trying to find a very specific thing and we're one of the only places they can get it. That's a nice resource to have. Yeah, yeah. So what is something that's coming up in the next year that you're excited about? So we're continuing our 15th birthday celebration the whole year. So that ends in June. So we will continue to drip out really exciting customs and special merchandise. Um, we've got uh, a unique project bag from Hide and Hammer. We've got more custom colors from other hand dyers like Freya. 
Um, so we'll continue to drip those out over the next few months and years. And then we've got some exciting workshops with some of our favorite designers coming back in the spring. We like to fill the spring time with a lot of workshops and visiting designers since it's a safe time to travel and winter's a little harder to travel. So Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having us here today. This has been so fun. Hi, Remy. Remy's <laughs> going to bury his nose in my I armpit. Know, it's so, so sweet. This is our one of our two emotional support animals that's, mm -hmm. that hang out at the shop, our emotional support pups. So um, Remy will um, greet you and slap you when you come in the door. <laughs> a gentle <laughs> a slap. A gentle slap. Um, but yeah. So sweet. Well, yeah, thank you for having us here today. Yeah. Thanks for coming.